Hello fellow ghost hunters and welcome to another video on my ghost simulator walkthrough series. Today we'll be taking a look at ghost world including how to get antenna level 11. If you guys haven't watched my previous video on antennas 1 through 10 in the main hub feel free to go watch that since a lot of the stuff in that video will be helpful for this video and that's a prerequisite before getting into ghost world to begin with. For those of you who don't know ghost world is unlocked after reaching antenna level 10 and can be accessed through the portal and volcano the side teleport menu and the main teleport area in the lab of main hub. Getting into Ghost World for the first time is very disorientating for new players since despite them having spent several hours up to this point, they are met with something that is completely foreign to them. This is a world without clear distinctions between areas littered with different ghosts and NPCs. At this point, players' intuition from playing before would either to be start all the quests they have available or start with the closest one. Unfortunately, both these paths have significant problems. Shelly, although the first progression quest in Ghost Simulator, doesn't offer a helpful perk. And the perk that Shelly gives appears to be useful since it is an additional pet slot, and pet slots generally are looked as to be really helpful. Unfortunately, in Ghost Simulator, an additional pet slot isn't actually super helpful since at best it increases your stats by 25%, which only applies if you have four of the exact same stat pets to be using. The perk resets every time you rebirth, and since most of the new content in Ghost Simulator is added after a rebirth, going for Shelly really doesn't make too much sense, especially since most of the good stat pets in the game are locked until after a rebirth, and so the only reason people ever really are supposed to do Shelly is if you're planning on chilling on your current rebirth for a while and grinding for like gems or something else for the currency. It takes a ridiculous amount of time to complete her quest. This is a trait shared among all the NPCs in Ghost World, where they take quite a bit longer than any of the previous NPCs or even most of the later NPCs in the game. Also, starting everything will inevitably lead to confusion and time wasted on bad quests, which although players can usually suss them out, it still takes a little bit of time to do so. To make matters worse, when players check what they need to upgrade their antenna, they find that they need a single data link item and there is no clear way to go about getting this item. Since previously players needed to go get items dropped from ghosts to upgrade their antenna, they may assume that they need to get a specific rare drop from a specific ghost or some other obscure method to get it. This compounds with the already confusing layout to make Ghost World basically impossible to traverse without help. To begin, players bypass all the close NPCs and head directly to Castle Courtyard to begin working on Yoko and or Leo. Although working on multiple quests is usually bad since it causes confusion, these two quests are similar-ish and both really helpful or in the case of Yoko required for later on so they can be done together. While working on these two quests, players can basically take whatever path they want including starting one and finishing it before working on the other one or taking both of them and swapping between them as they will. But once players do finish this, they are left at another point where there really isn't any obvious progression or a clear path to go forward. But players will now have a clear understanding of what Ghost World has, including knowledge of a locked area near the back of Ghost World, n another weird locked area inside the castle portion. The next step in progression is now heading into the castle and talking to Gatekeeper, a weird NPC standing next to one of the previously mentioned locked doors. He only has a few quests, and each quest only asks for a few ghosts each. Unfortunately, each of these ghosts has a quite a bit of health, and even though you've prepared a little bit from Yoko and Leo, you'll still probably take a little bit of time to do each of these ghosts, which can be a little bit slow, but the preparation will make it a little bit quicker. For his last quest, he gives you an item that unlocks the door next to him and then tells you to go defeat a boss inside of it, which is a new type of boss and is called the Great Guardian. And I know a lot of people struggle with this, so now we're going to be going ahead and talk about how to defeat this boss and some tips that you can have while going into it. Now one thing to note about this boss is that it's split into three different phases, with the second phase starting at 66 or 67 percent of its health, and the last phase starting at 33 to 34 percent of its health. During each of the three phases, the boss will have different attacks that you will need to learn how to avoid 
to be able to defeat the bomb. In particular, there are two attacks that happen during the last two phases that are really hard for new players to figure out. The first one, a white tractor beam that pulls the player in and does 35% damage immediately, is really hard to avoid. You need to know to get off your hoverboard and walk away from the boss when it targets you with this attack. But once you figure out how to do that, it isn't too hard. The only problem happens is if you have a weird character size that's either too short or too tall, you may be able to be grabbed no matter what and it might be impossible to avoid this attack. The second attack that players have struggle with is during the last phase, boss shoots a purple laser at you and kind of tracks wherever you're going. This laser does a lot of damage really quickly. It isn't obvious how you're supposed to dodge it, but if you get really close to the boss, like around where the shield is, you can easily just walk around or use your hoverboard around to go around in a circle and avoid the laser pretty easily. Once you know these two attacks, the other ones that the boss does are pretty easy to understand and easy enough to avoid, and I don't think they deserve attention in this video. During each of the three phases, you will need to shoot at the boss until its shield breaks, and once its shield breaks, you will need to go vacuum the boss, and because of that, it's best when the shield starts to get low to stick around close to the boss so that you don't waste time getting to the boss when the shield breaks, because if you do spend some time getting to the boss, it is possible to end up missing a cycle and having to do a phase three times instead of twice, and because of that, I just recommend sticking close to the boss and making sure to get vacuuming rather than trying to avoid the attacks by sticking away from the boss. Once you do defeat the boss, you can now return to Gatekeeper, and once you've completed his quest, he will reward you with Datalink, which if you remember, is the item that you need to go upgrade your antenna with now. And once you've done that, you have completed all of my recommendation for Ghost World. There are a few other quests that players can do in here, but none others that I would recommend for new players to begin their adventure with. And that is all for this video. If this video helped you out, feel free to leave a like or subscribe because that really helps out. And if you see anyone struggling in Ghost Simulator with Ghost World, since it is one of the most confusing areas in Ghost Simulator, feel free to share this video with them so that they can be able to get through it pretty easily like you were able to.